Not sure what to add to your Pitch Deck title slide? Well, you're not alone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through different scenarios and how you might use them to create a clear and intuitive title slide. Now, just like any other document or file, we always start with the cover section. And that's where you communicate the purpose and the value of your presentation to your audience. Now, you might have heard the saying before that says, don't judge the book by its cover. But we all know that that's what most people do. People will be judging your website by its cover, your books, your reports, and even your presentations by the cover slide. Now, this is especially important when you're mailing the presentation, and that's what people see right away, and also when you're in a meeting and and the presentation is on the projection screen right there behind you or on the monitor. So people are looking at that cover slide before you even open your mouth and start speaking. And they're trying to come up with a quick decision. They want to know, should I be paying attention to you or not? Is this information relevant? And they want to make a quick answer. Yes, no, or maybe because they want to give themselves permission. Should I zone out or just zone out and start thinking of something else? Or do I need to be paying attention to this? Is this important? So hopefully your cover slide will convey how important it is. So at least they can start listening to your introduction. So in this section, you're going to learn more about creating your cover slide section and the strategy behind it. So we're going to cover uh, cover slide strategies for effective pitch decks. Also, what is an executive summary and when to use one and what are value and purpose statements and how to create them and when to use them, plus some tips on how to keep your slides clean and easy to scan. So your target goal for this section really is to select the elements for your cover section based on your presentation objective and target audience. Now, cover slides are important, and that's why many people struggle with them. So if you're not sure what to put on your cover slide right away, my recommendation would be is wait until you've watched all the videos on the cover slide section and also watch the problem and opportunity and solution section, because really your cover slide is a summary of what you're going to be saying in the problem and solution section. So that would be my tip here for you. So for now, in these first introductory videos, I'm going to walk you through the strategy and foundation. So in the future, anytime you have this presentation come up, you'll be able to make a quick decision of what you need to add, and then you get to decide when and how to use them. So let's start by the most common uh, cover slide that you will see on the market. Now, many templates on the market have this framework. Anytime you present a presentation, you're going to have a place for a logo. You've got a title and a subtitle. And usually a subtitle is a value statement that supports the title that you've just talked about. Now, value statements are very important, especially for pitch decks. So that's why I created separate videos about them. Now, there are multiple videos about value statements and how to create them and purpose statements. So please do watch them all before you attempt to write your cover slide. Now, this is important as well and a good news as well, because the same hierarchy applies to your website. So if you want to mimic the same content and put it on a website, if you want to put it on any future report or document, the same hierarchy and strategy applies. And you're going to find it much easier now to come up with quick titles and subtitles. So now in most cases, really, you would start with a template like this, and the title would be the name of the product or a service. So if you're presenting a project, a company or a product or service, you can start with that. You could put the product or service name and you have a value statement to support it. That's why you'll find many templates on the market that follow that hierarchy where you have that title. So you get to describe what it is you're talking about. In this case, it's the, the logo is the company name, IT solutions and services, and then you have a value statement to convey what in it for the audience and a graphic to complement that message. So you'll find many of the templates like this one as well for a modeling agency, uh, this one for a business agency, they follow that hierarchy where you have that story in one slide. So you're, you're giving a snapshot of what it is that you're trying to say on the cover slide. Now, these are templates that are easy to edit. You can just replace the image and put your own content and you'll be good to go if you understand the strategy behind the value statements. Now, I use this same framework on my website as well for my website, uh, Magnus Media, the communication design agency. And I use the same framework when I'm doing pitch decks and sending out proposals. 
Now, in many cases, you might want to use the business or project name as the title, not necessarily the product or service. So in that case, you would put the logo, the business or project name, and a supporting value statement to convey the benefit to the audience. Now, the reason this would come in handy is especially if you have a logo that does not describe your company name or what you do. Now, this is a simulated example. Many people know what ESPN stands for. It stands for Entertainment and Sports Programming Network. But if this was a new company and no one knows what that logo stands for, then you're going to have to spell it out. So that's why I put the simulated example to show you that in this case, if you are pitching the entire company, you need to actually put the company name if it conveys what the service is. And then you add a value statement. This can work also internally for departments. For example, here's a, a, an IT department for a government organization. Now, the logo on its own might be known internally for people who've already been there. But if that presentation is being presented to different departments that might not be connected to this new department, they might not know what the logo stands for. So you can see here, that's why they have that in the footer. They put the full name of the department right there in the footer. So Keep that in mind. If your logo does not make sense on its own, you might have to put the name of your company or project somewhere on the presentation title as well. Now, in some cases, you might only need a logo and a value statement. Now, this format would work well if your logo is recognizable. For example, if you work for a brand like Nike or Ikea, most people know what, uh, what the, these brands are or if your logo contains a company name or a service name that, that you provide. So for example, here's a commercial template for a, a company called Loose Fabrics. So right away, the logo is very intuitive. We know what the company does uh, and we, the logo is the company name. So it's fabrics. There's no need to add any extra clutter. And the value statement is organic and ethically sourced fabrics. So right away, we can remove that clutter and the presentation speaks, the title speaks for itself. Now, you might be wondering, well, what if I don't have a logo? What if I don't have any branding yet? What if I'm just starting out a company and I don't even know what it's called? Well, that's a good question because there are many startups in that situation as well. So you might not know, you might not have registered a trademark. You don't, probably don't even have the budget to create a logo or branding. You're still working on the solution. And that's okay because you're going to find many templates that allow you to just put any title you want. So here's the pitch deck sample from Canva as well, another commercial template where you can see they just called it Sista. So it's a it's text. So it's not even a logo. You can type anything you want. I've had some clients call it Project X Y Z or whatever, something to just get started so that they can start brainstorming the solution and then they can worry about the branding and the name of the business later. Whereas some people get so stuck on the branding and the name that they forget to work on their sales presentation first. So focus on the pitch deck story first, and then you can always come up with a branding later. So in this particular case, you can just put the name, put any graphic and a value statement. The main thing is that value statement. This is really what's important on the cover slide. So you can see here another simulated example. You can make it look very presentable and help the audience understand what's in it for them, even if you don't have a logo or any branding yet. Meta stores and a value statement with a supporting graphic. This strategy can also work well if you're just starting out as a freelancer. Maybe you don't have a logo, you're just operating under your own name, you don't even have a website. That's okay. You can create a pitch deck and start sending out proposals and bidding on projects. You can just put the name of your services, the value statement, and just make it presentable. If you follow that hierarchy, you're going to make it easier for people to, to know exactly what you do. So look for templates like this one here, like this. you can see here, even though there's no logo with the design, you make you can make it appear as if there's a logo. You can see here these circles, give it that format where even if you don't have a logo, it's fine. You just replace the images, put the title and the su supporting uh, value statement, and that will get you started to start pitching that uh, idea or solution to your audience. Same thing, you'll find templates like this where there is no logo, just put whatever the title is, call it project for now. If you have no name, add the value statement and start moving fast. Now, some of the common questions I get are, should I add contact details? Should I add my website? Should I add the presenter name, the date or version number? Now, these are all good questions because you're going to find many templates on the market that have these. So it can get confusing. You can see this one here. We've got the logo. We've got all the contact details, the name of the presenter and her title and pitch deck. Okay, if I'm looking at this presentation, I'm thinking, okay, well, pitch deck for what? I'm not really seeing the idea uh, behind it. So I would say if you 
do need to keep that contact information, which could come in handy if you are in a space where people might not know your name and you want them to see the name before you get up to speak, that's fine, you can keep it, but you also need to follow that hierarchy on the presentation deck. So instead of calling it pitch deck, follow the same strategy where you put a title and subtitle. Now you can see here, we took out the name to the side with the contact information and we kept the big area showing the audience what's in it for them. Remember, they're trying to make a decision. Do I need to pay attention to this or not? So now you can see here the two slides side by side. Now the first one, which says pitch deck, do you really find that intriguing? Or do you want to listen to what this is about if you don't even know what it is they're pitching? Or on the other side, right away, you know what is the content and you know the value statement. So the big difference here is that the first one, if you just give call it pitch deck, it's going to look like a school project. Whereas the one on the right, it looks more that you're ready for business. You're ready to talk business and let's start to uh, get to business with this presentation. What about uh, the version number? Now, they could come in handy if you are talking internal presentations or if you're talking to repeat investors, you've got version one, version two, or internally within your team, it, it is common to put that. But that would be more for internal communication. You might put the version number. Now, the date might come in handy if you have a limited time offer or if you're speaking to investors and there's a, a, a time limit on that offer if you put a date or if you have weekly meetings and you want to make sure that uh, that each presentation is tagged differently under the date, then it would make sense to put a date. So the, your cover slide really needs to convey the purpose of your presentation to your target audience. Add any details that are relevant to your audience for each particular circumstance. Now, in some cases, you might need to add more than, more than one cover slide. One cover slide might not be enough. And that's why you'll find pitch deck templates that use multiple slides. Now, slide one could be the logo, the presentation title, the image, and the contact details. And slide two could have the purpose statement. Now, purpose statements can include your vision, which is the big picture of the long-term aspiration. Your mission statement uh, is your plan to achieve your vision, some of the core values and the business philosophy or your project philosophy. Now, purpose statements are very important. That's why I created separate videos about them. But for now, I wanted to bring them up because they could be part of your introduction or your cover section on your presentation. Now, in general, if you find that the two confusing, what is the difference between a value statement and a purpose statement? Now, a value statement is a short statement that's more suitable for marketing and sales communication, whereas a purpose statement is a longer statement that's more suitable for planning, for internal communication and implementation strategies as well. Now, that's why you might find templates like this one here from pitch.com that has this two cover slide format. Now, this format would work well for new companies that don't have a finalized logo or a short value statement yet. So they need more room to write a longer description like a mission statement. So you can see here how the cover slide could have the company name and just a title pitch deck, which I don't recommend, but that's what they have here on this template. And then the second internal slide could be the mission statement, which kind of describes the purpose purpose of the project or the business that they are creating. So here is how it might look like. This is a simulated example of how you might use a value statement and a purpose statement in the same presentation. So the cover slide, you can see here, we've got the title, subtitle, and we have the value statement, make a voice over IP calls easily and cheaply. And then you have a second slide, which could have your vision statement and your mission statement. Now we're going to be learning more about that in the subsequent videos, but I wanted to show you how you could use both at the same time in your presentation. Value slides could look something like this. Many companies pick, they say, these are the values and our guiding principles, and you can list them if, if needed in your presentation. Some companies like to add the philosophy uh, as well. There's no wrong or right way, depending on how you like to describe your solutions. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because you're going to be seeing many templates on the market that look like this one. Now, this presentation looks beautiful. It looks very stylish, uh, but we've got so many slides. We've got an introduction, vision, mission, value, and the title, and we still really don't know exactly uh, what problem this company uh, is solving. 
Now, this kind of pitch deck template could work well if you are talking to your internal teams or you're creating a style guide, but it's not going to be the kind of presentation you would use to close the sale or if you're do get, trying to get financing from a company. So anytime you're building a pitch deck, always remember the audience. There's no wrong or right way. It all depends on who you're talking to and what slides you would share with them, whether you're talking to the investors, your market or the internal communications. So if you see a lot of slides, now you know that really you get to decide when to use them as well. Now, if you're not sure, because the first pitch deck is always the hardest to create, start by talking to the market. Now, the market are the people who have to buy your solutions, people who have to invest their time and money. So start by conveying your message to them, and then you can start re elaborating more of how you might talk to investors and how you might explain that to your teams as well. And of course, always remember the temperature of the audience. Cold audiences don't want to know the details. They just want to preview. As you can convey that conversation and build that relationship, you can start adding more details uh, with the statements. So now before we dive into the rest of the cover slide elements, can you remember the difference between a value statement and a purpose statement? Well, I'll make it easy here for you. Value statements are short statements suitable for marketing and sales communication. So this would be the type of content you would put on your cover slide. And purpose statements are more detailed statements. They're good for planning and implementation. And this, these are things you would put in your style guide. You might put on your website, but not necessarily a, a, a financing or a, a sales presentation right away. So your action items for this video really is to make a quick decision. Try to decide, you know, first, do you need value statements, purpose statements, or do you need both? Now, most businesses have both, but at the very, very least, you definitely need to have a value statement. You can always work on your purpose statements later. So let's dive in and continue with the cover slide, and I'll see you in the next video.